The following program is sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're walking through a beautiful lakeside landscaping project. We'll begin with Kurt Zimple from Kittleson Landscape, who explains the challenges in a lakefront project. Next, we'll see how lighting can add a whole new dimension to a landscape design as we catch up with Craig Kittleson at a project we featured a few years back. And we'll finish up seeing the beautiful end result of our lakefront backyard paradise. So we have a lot to cover today. We'll get started right after these messages. When creating a beautiful landscape along a lakeshore, the project must comply with many rules and regulations in order to protect the natural resource. And when it involves a 40 plus foot rise, it becomes even more challenging. So let's begin today's show with Kurt Zimple from Kittleson Landscape, who explains how they were able to create this beautiful backyard paradise. Wow, Kirk, I've been to a lot of lakefront properties, but I think this one really takes the cake. That is spectacular. Yeah, it's been a great project. You know, we started basically from the lake on the bottom here, took out old failing retaining wall that was losing soil and could be into the lake. Basically built from that point all the way up the hill. Was it pretty challenging, not only working on a lake itself, but all the permitting that you have to go through to get in order to do this properly? Oh, correct. It was every day we were establishing erosion control. We were making sure if we had a lot of rain coming in, which last year there was a lot last fall, sure. we were setting up every day, silt fence, erosion socks, just to make sure we stabilize the hillside. Sure, now when you're dealing with this type of topography, I mean, from here it doesn't look nearly as impressive as when you get up to it. I mean, those are really tall walls. How do you keep that from falling into the lake? Well, that's the thing. Basically everything we did there was clear stone behind it, clear gravel, three quarter inch, incrementally compacting it, Geo grid in the retaining walls, above and beyond what it was engineered to be. This is a one in a lifetime thing. You don't sure. want to be touching this ever again. So yeah. it's built that way. Sure, and so what type of block did you guys opt for here? Well, this is a Rockwood eight inch chiseled face blue stone block. So the eight inch can be used for bigger walls. It's eight inch instead of the six inch. Sure. But geo gridding is the key with it too. So we geo gridded it beyond what it needs. So. <laughs> well, exactly. They're not going to have to worry about it. And there's no. no substitute for the peace of mind. Sound like fantastic homeowners to work with. Yes, they Environmentally are. conscious too. They don't want anything washing into here. And you know what I really like when I look at it is that it is set back. The yep. different layers, you have depth to it. And not only is it a block wall, but you have the prairie grass down below and then you have glacial boulders up top. So you're really blending it in. It looks like it's meant to be here on the shores of this lake. Exactly, and we're gonna add a lot more texture. Try to get some more color involved on the hillside using other plantings. We used the prairie drop seed last fall just to get it established to help sure. with erosion control. Sure. Our designer, Scott Gear. He's gonna keep adding different plantings and stuff like that. Wonderful, and you know another nice aspect is the access you've created down to the lake and out to this pier. I like the flagstone touch. Yeah, it helps too, it kind of brings back the more natural. And then when you get to the staircase, we use the Silver Creek bluestone steps all the way up. Approximately 45 by the time we get to the top, as you'll see, they're very functional, six inch. They're not like natural stone where they're a little bit, you know, different in Irregular, size. Sure, I mean, these look really nice and they're yep. nice and safe to walk up and down there. Exactly. Well, you mentioned when we get up top, why don't we head up there, see what the guys are up to today. Sounds good, let's go.
wow, this is beautiful up here. That's quite a hike up those steps, but I can see why you used the materials you did. Nice and uniform, no chance of slipping at all or tripping. No, nope, that's correct. And we were able to use the same product from the bottom, from level up here to the other elevation up here too. So it kind of incorporates it all together. This is just amazing. They're gonna have their own pool up here and a hot tub beyond it? Yeah, it's gonna be something else when it's all complete. You know, I really like the materials that you used here. There's some natural, some man-made, but they all seem to belong. What product did you go with for the uh, patio here? This is a Brussels Premier. We're using a polymeric sand next gel in the joints. We did soldier on the outside with a sailor on the inside. Oh, nice. Just right to separate, here. you know, give different lines. Once this is cleaned off, this fall will come back and do a nice seal job on it and it'll really pull the color out. Oh, it'll just be beautiful. I can see the guys just finishing up and you know, I can't compliment them enough. Not only with the patio, but all the brickwork. It looks like there's a lot of custom cutting going on with this block. Yeah, this is something, I mean, you have to give credit to the guys. We have very skilled, they're basically artists. To do this kind of project, it takes a lot more than just a couple years experience. There's a lot of different chiseling and breaking of block. So to even explain it all is overwhelming. Yeah, they're real craftsmen, that's for sure. And what a great profession to get into. I mean, if I was young and wanting to be able to work with my hands and be creative, working with your landscaping company would be a dream come true. I do have a question though. We talked about the importance of water control and we didn't want any runoff down below because we're concerned because we're on a beautiful lake here. What are you doing up here? Because as I recall, the polymeric sand, that seals everything. Where does the surface water go when it rains? Yep, you're correct. It is gonna seal and we always have drainers. So we have to take it at some point or the other. So on this portion of the project, we're gonna go to the beds, which we will have dirt, we're gonna have plants, but below that dirt, you have to remember that's a nine foot wall. We have approximately nine foot of three quarter inch clear gravel in there. <laughs> wow. So it is not gonna go out of this area. It is gonna go back into the ground and be clean. That's beautiful. Okay, that's on this level. What about up top here? So on this section, basically we don't have as many beds as down below like we looked at. So here, you can see he's actually putting chips in the permeable area, which we've incorporated a couple into this patio. Look at that, so that's different than the polymeric sand. They're actually chips that allow the water to drain down through? Correct, so all this water is basically getting drained to this area. All the cobbles that are behind these retaining walls like we have over on the other side, that is all permeable below that. Wow, is this beautiful. Was this in the design originally or did you guys come up with it on site? It was kind of a go with the flow, but in order to keep the water, you know, up here instead of going off into the lake, yeah. we thought that was uh, the best way to do it. Well, you did a great job because you have a nice design flair to it. I would never even know that that was for drainage because it's so beautiful. They have to just be elated with how things are coming along. You know, it's been awesome being able to get out here at this stage. It's going to be even better if we can visit it when it's completed. How long until you're done? Well, hopefully six weeks, depending on weather, and I can't wait to get back out here and see everything done. Sounds good. We'll see you in a few weeks. Stick around. We'll see how lighting adds a whole new dimension to a landscape design next. When designing a landscape in new construction, oftentimes it's completed in phases. So now let's catch up with Craig Kittleson from Kittleson Landscape, who shows us phase three in a project we featured a few years back. Wow, Craig, what a beautiful landscape design. I'm so excited to feature this on today's show because what was it, about two years ago? We were out here when you were in the rough stages and to be able to come back, it's really special for me to see how it's growing into the design. And at that point, you had said that it's best, especially in new construction, a, a massive landscape like this, to do it in phases. And is that what you've done? You've looked like you completed the rough, which is phase one, and all the plantings, which is phase two. Exactly, you know, look at the color and stuff that we've got going on here. This phase two that we ended up doing with the plantings is just give a lot of color and warm up the place. I don't know if you remember last time in the show, it was pretty stark with just the lawn. Sure. So adding some of the Wygelia, some of the perennials, some native, some non-native, some really nice colorful plants have really brought the whole color scheme together here. And you know what I like about it is we talked about this walkway being a gateway to the home and leading you down. And what I like best is you made it kind of curvilinear. So there's some interest that way. And then it really accents all these beautiful plants here. It wasn't just this area either. As I recall, it went totally around the house encompassing the whole property. 
Now we got that beautiful patio down below and then the back landscape with some of the trees around the property. Just the, the color and the softscapes have really kind of enhanced all the stone and all the neat products that we've put in here in phase one. Okay, so there's phase one, the rough grade. Phase two was all the plantings. Now you're back out here. I see your guys working down below near the patio. What is going on in phase three? This is the lighting that we talked about and it's one of our favorite things to do. It really brings the evening landscape a whole different look. It's amazing. Okay, so over here I see two different types of lighting. Let's explain what the role of lighting is in a landscape design. Function and design is key to doing a beautiful landscape lighting job. There's some safety aspects of course, but you know we're trying to accent this house and accent some of the neat parts of the house. So we want to make sure that the lighting does it in the evening. Okay, well that makes sense. So as I look here, there are several of these type of lighting throughout this landscape design. I can just see them popping up. What is the role of this one? You know, a lot of people have seen this. It's called a down light and it basically casts light down. It illuminates the pathway so we can see where we're going. It's going to also do a really nice job on some of these plants. Boy, is that nice. And it's doing more than illuminating the pathway, like you're saying. It picks up on the plants. And to me, it gives the homeowner an opportunity to enjoy their landscape at night, whereas otherwise you wouldn't be able to do that. And it's amazing what this juniper will look like at night. The color changes. If you had a dark sky with this light, it changes the look of this plant. Wow, I can't wait to see this at night. Now, these are the pathway lights. Over here I see one, looks more like up lighting. It's exactly up lighting. And what we use the up lights for are to maybe shine specific features of a house. So this light is actually trying to shine up here and create more of a spotlight in that area to help accent it. And we've actually got one, Stu, on the other side doing the same thing. Okay. So these cross, and the neat thing about it is there isn't a lot of glare off these lights. We sure. can shoot them up. We can also shoot them down. So even though these are spotlights, they're not harsh. I mean, they're going to illuminate that. It's going to be just beautiful. It's spectacular, let's face it, during the daytime. But at night, it would give a nice accent there and then just soft lighting down below. Right. One thing about lighting too is you get bounce and bounce is important. When we illuminate that beam, you remember that light's gonna come down like the moon. So that soft lighting that you just said is exactly what happens here. We get a real soft light down here. Okay, so that takes care of two different. You have the pathway, you have the spotlights and up lighting in this case, and you can use those down. What's the third type of lighting you incorporated in this design? It's called a wash light. It's similar to your up light, but what it does is it softly casts light throughout an area. So like we would maybe illuminate a large stone area on a house, a retaining wall. It also works really nice for some larger plants. Now I see that your guys are down below installing something. Can we go take a look at that? Sounds like a great idea. Wow, Craig, this patio turned out just great. You guys did an awesome job on the installation. You know, they just love it. They use it all the time. They enjoy the fire pit. They are really gonna like it now with the lighting. Really, so that's what you guys are working on today is installing some pathway lighting? It is. I recognize this light from up top. This is one of the pathway lights and holy cow, <laughs> that's heavy. I mean, this is a quality light. You know, it's made out of brass, copper. All these lights that we're using are high quality. So they're not pot metal like the big box store. So as far as the installation is concerned, what's involved in that? Basically, this is a low voltage wire that we use and we are able to install it at six inches in the ground. So it allows us to retrofit an existing house or even this house, this was basically all the landscape was in. We ran over wiring, instead of having to dig down 18 inches and put in high voltage wiring, it's actually a lot more cost effective too. Sure, and it, since it is low voltage, the homeowners don't have to worry about your pets, your kids, and it doesn't have to be buried way down, so it's very safe. But my question is, you know, I see 
the wire here, very heavy duty, yet it's copper. You're out in the elements. There's a chance for failure, and I've seen it happen with wire nuts there. I mean, how do you prevent that? You're going to, you know, high quality fixtures, a high quality installation, but isn't this an opportunity for failure? Yeah, we use a ACE connector, and what that is, it is, oh, wow, um, that. it's a brass connector that hooks the wires together, and then we basically heat shrink it, and you can see there's a gel that comes out. You're not gonna get moisture through there, Stu. Wow, and so again, ultimate in peace of mind, if you have it professionally installed the way you guys do, you're not gonna have to worry about this failing. And that's why we use quality parts and quality fixtures. Well, Craig, these homeowners aren't gonna have to worry about failure, that's for sure. And what a beautiful job you guys have done on this landscape design. I appreciate you coming on today's show and quickly walking us through it. Thanks so much, Stu. Stick around, we'll head back out to our lakefront project next. Earlier in today's show, we learned the objectives and challenges in this lakefront landscaping project. Now let's finish up with Kurt Zimpel from Kittleson Landscape to see the spectacular end result. Wow, Kurt, this is incredible. Just stunning. It's nearing completion, obviously. Are you happy with how it's turning out? Yeah, it's been a great project. Our guys have done just great craftsmanship. We've worked everything together on different elevations to create a you know, just a great area. Well, quickly, what I'd like to do to wrap up today's show is kind of walk through what you accomplished here. I mean, aesthetically speaking, this is second to none, right on the lakeshore, but I know it was very challenging as well, especially from the water management standpoint. Yeah, we've taken a lot of care with just drainage, you know, keeping everything on the property. We've done a lot of things integrating permeable areas with the pebbles and clear stone to permeable areas, you know, set up in the patio going down into the clear stone. Yeah, and I also like the mix of hardscape and softscape. There's numerous planting beds around here, and it's a very warm, inviting feel to it with all the natural looking materials. Is that what the homeowners are trying to accomplish out here, is just create a warm, inviting environment to entertain in? Yeah, actually the homeowners have been great on this project because she has helped a lot of times, they're coming up with different things she liked and they fit perfect into the landscape and we were able to incorporate that working with her. The homeowners wanted to have it basically their personal outdoor living area and that's what they've accomplished with that, with a hot tub, pool, planting beds and everything else. Well, you know, one thing that jumps out at me is the cooking area, and I didn't anticipate a roof over it. Yeah, this turned out really nice. This was in the original plan, you know, to tie this and the house together, and it gives a dry area for them to entertain if it's raining or inclement weather. Well, this is perfect. This is big enough that you could entertain in here while the guy's cooking. Exactly. You have the fireplace, you have the grill, and you're covered. A <laughs> wood-burning fireplace. You know, I think about a fire pit outside. This takes it to the next level. I love that idea. That turned out really nice. And basically on this portion of the project, we did all the, what we're standing on, all the pavers. Sure. We incorporated our block walls tied in with the permeable areas down into Clearstone and allowed the mason to do their thing to incorporate into our stuff and, you know, the fireplace. And you bring up the mason and I got to believe on a project of this magnitude, there's more than just you and the mason involved. You must have to work with several different contractors. Oh yeah. What we do on a project of this proportion is, you know, a builder gets together with our team as far as you know design and we coordinate things together and make them work together. And you know what I love about this? It ties into the design of the home. It ties in to the beams over top of the hot tub over there. The stonework ties into the planters as well as the walls of the home. I mean, it really feels warm and inviting and like it's meant to be here, enjoying this beautiful view. Yeah, it doesn't just happen. That's the thing when you have a good design team, you work together, you can make things like this happen. Sure ties together and it works great. And you know, when I think about different backyard paradises, most of them aren't this extravagant. I mean, this is beautiful, mm -hmm. but most of us are looking for a patio, a fire pit, a walkway, a planting bed. You guys still can handle that. And what is that process? If I'm watching today's show and I say, boy, I want that type of craftsmanship in my backyard. How do you do that? Majority of our projects are more like what you're talking. Nice little outdoor living areas for people. Basically we can do that in house with our design team. We go out, we meet, we can put together a plan if needed, or we can come up with something with the homeowner. And I've had the opportunity to visit some of those and they turn out equally as well as this one. But this one, let's face it, this is extremely impressive and it's a great example of how if you can dream it, you guys can help build it. But you have to follow all the rules and regulations and at the end of the day, I know firsthand from watching you guys do your work, you're very conscientious and you truly do care about keeping our lakes clean. Oh, exactly. We've taken every, every bit of care we could to keep the water in this area 
getting it back down into the groundwater and not run off. Homeowners on this project have to be elated. I appreciate you taking the time out to walk us through the design and implementation. You bet, thank you. The preceding program was sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network.